Well, a very good evening to you and thanks for taking the time out to tune this, this evening. Of course, Donald Barrett here on Terrace Talk. Uh, and it's going to be a very fast Terrace Talk this evening because we've got four Killarney races uh, and we have Liam and we have Dini and we have John. And I've warned them that they'll have to talk faster than Gavin <laughs> White can run <laughs> to get through all the comments here this evening. Uh, but it, we are in a celebratory mood, of course, because we are looking forward to an All-Ireland final. Uh, Liam, you said playing the football we were playing, we'd never get to a final. <laughs> that, well, was that in January? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, to, I, be to be fair, <laughs> I said it was, it was only about four weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, whatever happens since the Loud game, anyway, everything has uh, everything is hunky-dory again, but... By God, did I put us? Did I put our hearts racing at times now on, on Sunday? All right, but great, fantastic weekend of football. Our ladies Saturday night. You know, that was another game that was a, a hell for leather kind of a game and a fantastic result, kicking a point only in the second half and still coming out against the All Ireland champions. So yeah, all things rosy now in the garden and carry it uh, today. So hopefully, two weeks time now we'll have uh, we might have Sam back home again. Fair play. Let's leave. Let's leave him start. John, of course, you're you're celebrating junior All Irelands and everything out there in this area. Ah, sure, it was a great weekend, uh, Donald, you know, first, I suppose the two Kerry teams winning was brilliant and, uh, you know, the New York team, the contacts, Shame, Shea McElligot, man of the match really, I suppose, and officially his, his, his uh, grandfather Tom, a great club man, North Kerry board, they'll get his mother, Kellett, and then we had uh, Thomas O'Brien uh, from Hanagran in the Bell Lanford Parish as well, and uh, Hugh Mulville, his uh, father party played with Belly Dunho, but a great win for them as well, like, and, uh, but look, wh what a game, what a weekend, we've been given out about the standard, but, Two great games, intense and pace and, and scores, and it had everything really. And uh, particularly yesterday's game, you know, it was it was a, a super exhibition of football, and uh, you know, it's hard looking Derry, mm -hmm. but, but we, we we got over the line. I think our experience, our experience told, and uh, the magic of David Clifford. And for Dini Long, you're celebrating Kerry beating the team that beat your own county. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about celebrating, but uh, at home, I think Derry surprised a lot of people. You know, they were written off. They and actually uh, played very good football, didn't they? Didn't they? Yeah. In, in the first half, I mean, their shooting stats were were, were, were amazing. They didn't miss anything. They had one wide, which was kind of a, yeah, a, a shot to nothing. I think most of the public and you know the press and everybody said it would be dull and mm -hmm. they'd play 15 men behind the ball. But in fairness, some you know they kicked some fantastic scores. They were like Johnson there, you know they 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 really put it up to Kerry. Uh, Kerry came good in the last 10 minutes, but I suppose when you were David Clifford playing, you were better chance of winning the match than, than <laughs> not winning the match so mm -hmm. you know he, he's a super player and probably one of the best we've ever seen so yeah. while you have David Clifford fit you would certainly have a great chance of beating anyone. Yeah absolutely. Uh, we'll celebrate all that of course through, through the evening as I said four races we also have the Kerry Master footballers in which is just after half seven and we're making a quick phone call to Glenn Fisk as well. Congratulations to him of course. Uh, Getting promoted to Division 2 there, that's secure, but of course they, w they won the league in a playoff against Lone Rangers as well, we'll have a, maybe a quick chat about that as well. All that in the second hour, and said the four races. Getting contact with 0667126236666 and text us on 0833033300. Uh, loads of questions, loads of comments coming in. Uh, and we're going to break up the show tonight in, in, in different bits and maybe we, we, we look at different aspects of the game. But let's look at the first half first, because from a carry perspective, uh, Liam, it was only about a 7 out of a 10 performance, we, we, we limped to the line 3 points at half time, we were probably praying for half time to come, we had lost Dermot O'Connor to the, the black card uh, and Derry were really putting us under massive pressure, they were coming up those wings and they were getting the scores, were you surprised at how good Derry were in that first 35 minutes? I was, the, it was the way they, they, they came out and played, we were expecting a completely different Derry but they came out at 100 miles an hour. They attacked us. You could see over the course the Cusick the Cusick side. You know they really kind of kind of targeted that area. Um, I think what really kind of kind of upset us more was was their goalkeeper Lynch when he was coming out. We didn't know what to do with him, whether to go for, go to go at we him or we, don't go at him. We, we kind of stayed off him. We, we, we stayed I, off him. I'd imagine we had a plan. Don't go near him. Let him alone. Yeah. He, he, he but then he started him. causing a bit of trouble. No, they got they got a couple of goal chances, and then they got the goal, and he probably had a hand in that. And I think we panicked maybe a small bit. And I think if you look at Jack's um, interviews there about trying to get information into the players, I'd say they struggled to get to get those things over the line. But look, Derry, their efficiency rate, I think, in the first half was 80%. Mm -hmm. And by the end of the game, it had dropped to 50. So it just showed like that they were going at 100 miles an hour. 
and really I suppose it was the last 10 minutes that they struggled in and that's where we, we, we kind of kicked down with a bit of experience as well but yeah um, you know, they were very good like uh, you could see the players Brennan Rogers, Connor Glass all these guys all guys that we knew that were going to mm-hmm. cause us trouble and, and they've been and there did. for a while I mean in fairness to Rogers, I mean Rogers was a very comfortable midfielder he, he, he's a full back just gone out there this year to do that job and, yeah. and very yeah. comfortable there and McGuigan and, and they're just it's just the overlap they create the overlap and they keep going and keep going but I suppose that's the one thing like I said and it was probably towards the last 10 minutes the tank was empty. You could see maybe the last five or six minutes they were really on their feet and when McGuigan kicked that last one that he was supposed to float into the thing, you could see the legs were gone. Yeah. You know, and mentally they were they were tired as well and I think that's 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 what won it out at the end of the day for us. We stayed with them just about. They had us on the ropes but I think in the first half we were going in at half time and we were all scratching our head at half time and saying this is going to be it John Kennedy going at half time Jack O'Connor had big calls to make I mean you go into the dressing room you're three points down uh, Derry not playing according to the plan really it was meant to be a dull boring game where you know they, they last so long and we'll, we'll pick them up he had a big call to make and he, he, he made that big call fairly lively because Stephen O'Brien arrived in the second half uh, right call obviously yeah it was and you know you could have picked out five or six players that could have gone Done, to be fair, like I thought, the Derry half back then were outstanding. The midfield, uh, Shane McGuigan was you know, we haven't seen Jason fully under that pressure for so long. But to be fair to Jason and Marley, they, they did they did get organized in the second half, and Shawnee Shea as well. But Stephen O'Brien's influence, you know, apart from David Clifford, he had the biggest influence. He's blocking down, he had two blocks, his work rate, and I think the point with the left leg, you know, it was an incredible score, which was the score of a man with huge confidence. Mm-hmm. And of course, he's fierce, courageous. I mean, he he brings that courage to the game. We remember him a couple of years ago, of course, in the Tyrone game as well in the semi final. He was absolutely outstanding. Um, a fella better suited to come on, or is he going to make a start? Well, I tell you, there's, that's a big there's call. It's a big call, and there's quite a few big calls. Brian Begley did very well when he came in as well, yeah, yeah. you know. So it's a great way to go into final. But it's the first game we got an impact off the bench. It really. was. It was. Yeah. yeah this year. Yeah. And did we get an impact <coughs> off the bench? I mean, only one player. Impacted up the bench, surely did he? Well, it's better than no player. <laughs> right, uh, <laughs> but Bigley, Bigley did yeah. well when he came on. He made, thought, a yeah, runs made a few he put, runs. He put Derry on the back foot. Yeah, he looked you know, solid. Uh, but it's a great way going into the final. You have two weeks now. There'll be fellas looking over their shoulders. It'll be held for leather. And you know, there's a few. There'll be a few interesting calls. Yeah. And another man that could come into the reckoning, I think, is Killian Spillane. If he's ready, we know he's no football player. But you need a guy that's going to put it over the bar in when the when the heat is on. He's done it before. Yeah. Dini, looking at her opposition for the next day, obviously we were watching Dublin and Monaghan as well. A different start of the game, obviously, but Monaghan were very brave as well throughout that game and, and, and pushed the dubs all the way to the end. But obviously Dublin had a little bit more of the tank in there. Yeah, again, it was similar to Kerry, to Kerry uh, Derry game, is that you know Dublin pulled out all the stops again in the last quarter and out, outscored them by... One five to a point or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, again, Monaghan, you know, I've been saying for a while that all the Northern teams are, are of the same level, but I didn't think that they were at the level that we saw over the weekend. Like, both Northern teams played very good football. Mm-hmm. They were willing to take the game to Dublin. Do you Kelly. think, Dini, the game is getting to a watershed now where the Ulster teams traditionally would have played very defensive stuff are now beginning to say to themselves, were good enough for the rest of them playing football as well. Maybe Armagh should have played a bit more football. They could because they certainly had great outstanding forwards as well. So, is is it, are we at a watershed moment where football is kind of coming back to the football that you might enjoy for next year? I think so. I think so, and hopefully that is true. And I think we saw a small bit of it. And you see, we all know that the defensive game is is negative, and and it's horrible to watch. <laughs> but you know, you look at all the teams that you know play it regularly. They, they're not going to have success. It doesn't bring success. That would get you so far. But in fairness to both Derry and Mallon and Derry in particular, you know, they caught, if you like, they, 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 they surprised everybody with the way they played. And it proved that they have the footballers. They took great scores over a wide spread of players and were lucky not to probably get a goal or two. So in fairness to them now, Derry stepped up to the plate and they put it up to Kerry. Kerry will obviously benefit from it because most people thought that Kerry would have a walk in the park and win by seven or eight or nine points, but that didn't happen. Mm-hmm. I suppose it didn't happen once you get over the line, I suppose, most importantly. Evening, lads, that was edge of the seats uh, stuff yesterday. Uh, for years, Kerry were told they couldn't handle Ulster sides. I think that's been put to bed. Uh, I like the, the, the edge that we bring now as well. It's key to being successful, and thanks, Emil. And that's from Neil Ferter and Donor in County Mead, of course, and Mead, of course, celebrating their own victory 
uh, over the weekend, um, winning the Talton Cup, of course. Hi, Donald. Uh, so ironic the negativity in a lot of national media focusing on Kerry being over physical on Shane McGregor. Uh, when you think of what Clifford has to put up with in every game, uh, we got no sympathy when Gooch was targeted for years. Uh, up the kingdom, that's Pat uh, in Kilcommon, and that's something that we will touch maybe in the second part of the show, Pat, there. Uh, as well is is is, is both that course and, and of course Joe McCullen is going to feature a lot. Uh, it would be nice to see both Kerry teams win all Ireland's. Of course the, the men's and the ladies. And best of luck to them and the management. Uh, up the kingdom, that's Dermot and Margaret, and they're in two assists and they're on every week to us. And fair play to them. Uh, they had a loss there last week, of course. Or we or we, we remember poor old Donald down there as well. Uh, congratulations to both teams and management. Good wins over the week. Uh, and hope they go on to win the All Ireland. And the final one for now, uh, hi Donald. I still don't know how Kerry won that game. I thought they were gone, uh, but they got themselves uh, to another level of momentum and won it next Charles. Well, Charles, you better always have a bit of faith. It was so Kerry man in charge, we were never going to lose. We'll take a break. Oh, he's a marvellous player. No, we've clinched the base out here. We'll let you know who a marvellous player is, <laughs> listeners, don't you worry. <laughs> that was John Kennedy. John Kennedy was a marvellous player for many <laughs> Well, he's not there no longer. No, a um, couple more comments. Donald, the black card was not a black card uh, and shows how impartial the referee was. Right, listen, I think it was a black card. It was a black card all black day. Card all day yeah. It yeah. really was, wasn't it? Yeah. He yeah. kind of knew what he was he doing. He kind of knew he put the hand out and it's kind of like a trip, a black card is a tripping. Yeah. Well, so yeah. And, 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 and you kind of brought him down it. Uh, now more calls 0667123666 and you can text us as well as 0833033300 uh, Dublin have Cluxon or Calhoun this year and it'll be a different animal that's Dennis in Killarney of course he's warring caution uh, and talking about Killarney of course we have another race over in Killarney and we'll head straight back over to Pat Griffin for the 620 there you go, the 620 race ran in Clary. No, it ran pretty quickly, to be <laughs> fair. Um, and we'll back over to Pat Griffin there for uh, the further results, of course, and the show betting there, uh, I think, about 15 minutes' time in it. But anyway, let's get back to where we're discussing. Um, the new word is clutch. Clutch players, clutch moments. Everything is clutch, clutch, clutch. Basically, for our older listeners, it's a magic moment. It's it's, it's something that kind of game changes the whole lot. Uh, Liam, two or three game-changing moments for you as in that game. Yeah, I suppose... The first one was definitely the, the response when Derry got the goal that we responded straight away. Mm. Gavin White, who was exceptional again yesterday. No, there was very little said about him all was the game. Was he far off man the match, to be fair? He to was him. very close to yeah. yeah, very close to Winter Jan. Yeah. Very good, yeah. Um, the amount of covering, the amount of work, the running. And like I said, that was the biggest moment in the game for me because if Derry had gone ahead in few points in the first half again, by, by that, I think we'd be, you know, it was giving them more petrol. Whereas we kind of we nullified it straight away, but in thirty seconds, like we were mm-hmm. in the ball in the back of the net, and it was sort of a well worked goal, you know. So yeah, I think that was one of the big moments for me. The other big moment, I suppose, in the, in the first half was probably Shane Ryan's point. You know, that was a big that was a big point as well. I know it's a bit controversial as well. Nothing <laughs> controversial, <laughs> but surely, is there? But, goal I, kick but I think Shane Ryan, Shane stuff. Ryan's another guy who has been outstanding all year. You know, I think even his kick outs yesterday. If it t- happened in a county league game, what would happen? I think 99% of the referees would probably would have given a, re- a free against Shane. And probably a card. Uh, you'd be very lucky not to get a card as well, yeah. You know. um, I suppose when we were looking, being wearing our carry hat, we were delighted when he was minding him, minding the ball, he turned. But I suppose it was. To be fair to him, and I, and, and, and I looked at loads of social media about it last night, and people would say, yes, it was perfect, and no, it was a, a foul and a free, and, and, and it was a bit on the nasty side, it was a heavy hit, and it was a dark hit, and whatever sort of thing. The pass that led up to John Kennedy put him into massive pressure because yeah. all of a sudden it was a much important wing ball get position. Yeah. The fact that he won the position, he had to go high to get it. He got it obviously. That there was a collision, uh, went down. But after it, I mean, he had the space. He went straight for goal. Massive point. Uh, he shows why he's an outfield player. Oh, there's no. You hit the nail there. I think he had to win the ball. Poor pass. Had to win it because there could have been a goal on the ball if he didn't win it. But when he got it, I think everyone on the ground from Kerry said, Shane Ryan's going to have a cut here. And what a score, it was a brilliant score. But he showed that he does play outfield. It was a it was a forward score, really, mm-hmm. not a goalkeeper score. Yeah. You know, it was a brilliant one. And the other big one there, I think, was the save. I think it was around the 50th That's minute. Right, yeah. McGinnis yeah. went through the centre-back with a serious game for Derry, but a great save inside. And, uh, you know, they were all big points in the game, like, yeah. you know, but I thought Shane Ryan's point, it really lifted the Kerry supporters. Yeah. But the goalkeepers now, like, we had 22 kick-outs. Mm-hmm. He hit the target 19 times, like you know, so it shows how important he is. He's way more comfortable now compared to a couple of years ago when we were watching him. You'd be kind of, he was kind of. Is that itchy. not expected now, though? I suppose. I mean, to be fair, Paul Murphy is four yards out in the line, he's catching. I mean, 
that's a stat from a foreign era surely, is it? <laughs> no, but even when you're looking when you're looking at some of the kicks where he's kicking them over two or three bodies and, and a guy running onto it and stuff like that, no, they are the important ones. And I think that's going to be a big thing against Dublin because yeah. Cluxton is the king of it. And but I think Shane has really stepped up his game and He's a nailed on all star for me, yeah. Yeah, and of course, I, I, I'm only having left with your poor Liam. God help us. Uh, they're all giving out without <laughs> picking on Liam. But it shows you the importance of the ones he missed. He missed one. The one he slipped. Yeah. And there he yeah. scored a point there, straight yeah. away. And they had momentum then as well, yeah. 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 Dini, it used to be the midfielders were the most important men in, in, in Gaelic football. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. Goalkeepers are becoming the most important men in Gaelic football. Well, if you go back to yesterday's game, you know, two things, Shane Ryan. You know, the point that he got and the save he made in the 15 minutes, right. and we got a hand it, you know, the fantastic save. So they were crucial, crucial. But the part that the very goal he played was yeah. crucial as well, in the sense that he caused Kerry endless problems, mm -hmm. and he would cause anybody endless problems because, you know, it's a system they have. They, they believe in it, they stick by it, and it, it pays dividends from mm -hmm. And it's a difficult, difficult to counteract. It is, and it's a high risk, high reward it's strategy. I mean, like if you turn him over like Comer did last year, it is in the back of the net, Correct. and it is all over. This year, obviously, it didn't get near him. When a goalie comes up the field, it's hard for a, a defender to say, Do I stay with my man or do I go for him? Mm. What would you have done? Well, you know. When he comes so far, you, you, you have to make a decision and obviously somebody has to go. And I don't think management have anybody in a position to say, look, if this fellow is coming up the field, we'll bring somebody from maybe further back to, to go to meet him or whatever. It's a difficult thing to do, particularly in the modern game, because all the goalkeepers are pretty good at passing it. Mm -hmm. So if you go to him, he's going to lay it off to somebody else and all of a sudden they have the, the overlap. Then you're in trouble because you're pedaling backwards and, and they have the momentum going forward. It's a very yeah. difficult, difficult thing to do. And you'll probably see it in the county championship. And probably the team that will use their goal the most <laughs> could, you know, go far in the championship. That's the way football has gone. There you go. Yeah. I'm only here a year and a half. I have Dini Long talking about the modern <laughs> football. The way fly goalkeepers. Fly goalkeepers. <laughs> Space and overlaps <laughs> and everything. You see, I haven't converted. I yeah, didn't, didn't take this long. things about Roger and Lynch, though. Yeah. He took it that bit too far in the second half. He looked nervous on the ball. He, he, he was there. blocked twice. Yeah. We backed off, but then when we came to him, he shot was smothered on two occasions. And in the critical period, in the last seven minutes... When we pushed up on him. When we pushed up, he went long. Mm -hmm. They hadn't the accuracy. Yeah. We broke it or won it. They were critical in the overall, because there was two points there for the taking if he'd shot earlier, but he took it a bit too far. And in the last seven minutes, we won every break yeah. and we, we won a few clean catches. Mm. John, did Jack set Kerry up differently in the second half? I mean, fair enough bringing in Stephen O'Brien, he added a bit more to it, but Kerry seemed to attack or at least want to block and defend much further up the pitch in the second half than they did in the first half. And even the first ball that went up in the second half was won by Dermot straight away and Shawnee Shea, who, to be fair, I, I didn't see a whole pile of him in the first half, he was outstanding in the second half, but he drove on straight. And we, we, we kind of blocked Derry, and that's probably put Oren Lynch back a bit because he wasn't getting up to midfield yeah. untouched. He was now being, mm -hmm. you know, nearly built it at, at the 30 metre line. Was that a decision that was made by the players, or is it a decision that's made inside the dressing room, or is it something that fellas are looking at stats yeah. on and saying, this is where we need to nail him? I think so. Look, speaking before the game, we were talking about the great game the night before with Dublin and the Monaghan, and we said we're probably going to say Dow's struggle here, that Derry won't attack him, which was the total opposite. Now I think they got in at half time. We were only three points down. Derry had played a lot of the ball. So we were not in a bad position. And I think we changed our tactics. We, we squeezed up that bit more, put more pressure on them. Yeah. And as a result, you know, Stephen O'Brien's intervention also. But mm -hmm. as a result, I think we, we upped our game and we didn't give them the respect or we didn't stay off them as much. But we had to push up on them because we yeah. were down three points. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like if they, if they got the first point or two in the second half, we go down four and go down five points, it would have been a different game altogether. So Kerry had to come up with a different attitude and it showed when we yeah. pushed up on them, the, their goalkeeper struggled to get the ball out. You know, so yeah, because they had a lot of space in the first half where they could create overlaps. Yeah. Brendan Rodgers too, he's one that came off the post. Yeah. You know, he's a great game, but he's one that came off the post. They were all misses for Derry, like. The wrong options. They seemed yeah. to take the wrong option the whole time. Evening lads, here everyone's getting tough and all the comments coming in. Uh, congrats to Kerry. Two points I'd like to make. A, if Dublin had Stephen Cluxon last year, uh, last two years, they would be more than likely going for nine in a row. I don't know if that's a question or a fact or a statement, whatever it is. Uh, 
We take it as a question, Liam, true or false? Yeah, go, uh, uh, has a good point. True or false? I I'm the, putting him under pressure there because we, we, we're in the championship like, season. We're, we're we're just just getting, we're, 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 we're going to buy tin mining for deep shows and everything. So getting back to our goalkeepers is how important they are. And it just shows people were saying that Dublin had gone backwards winning back Luxton. Dizzy Fowler wasn't going backwards. Dizzy Fowler wants to win in All-Ireland. And to win in All-Ireland, you need a Cluxton. And I do think that if he was there last year, it might have been, it might have been a different result. I, would, I wouldn't disagree with a listener. Okay, that's a good point. Point B for you, uh, John. There's a C here as well, then you don't worry. Uh, if the last free by Derry yesterday went into the square, I think our friend Joe would have given a penalty. <laughs> well, Speculation. Well, well, Joe, Speculation. Speculation. Was right. <laughs> it was going to be very difficult to get it, to get any type of a squad if it did go into, which was a strange one by, by, by Shane McGuigan. You know, obviously he miscalculated it and went over the bar. It was but tiredness, the yeah, yeah. tiredness, yeah. 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 I suppose it's a hard enough kick to judge, isn't it? Kind of landing it in, and you want to get it as close as you can. Now there was a bit of wind against them and the whole lot, but I, know, I suppose it just floated over, and maybe it was tiredness and the whole lot. By and large, McGuigan had a very good game yesterday, didn't he? And, and, and he certainly caused a lot of questions for Jason Foley. Yeah, he's a good footballer. Uh, I, I was very impressed with him. Uh, he took a lot of punishment. I, I know I never really recall it there that David Clifford, but you know, if you're David Clifford or if you're McGuigan, if you're you know, a marquee player, you know, you have to expect that because, you know, the opposition and the management there are going to say, listen, try him out, see what he's like, do this, do that, whatever, whatever goes more or less. So he is a good footballer. I think we'll hear a lot more of him. And I think that, you know, with him as your focal point in around the square, uh, I think Derry could be in line for an All-Ireland in a year or two. They, they certainly have the talent. Uh, fair play to them they they, they surprised me mm -hmm. and uh, I was delighted to see it because I was expecting a very dull game but we got the very opposite mm -hmm. no it was a fantastic game I mean the first half alone I mean I know three points out at half time but where we were sitting I mean everybody was buzzing at the quality of the game the way Derry come out the way they had scored the way the game was set up as well for Kerry to come after him um, a, a, a touch of a question that comes in here um, obviously there there's one 99% of people like David Clifford, but we have one here as well. <laughs> David Clifford is a fantastic player um, and he does fantastic stuff. But let it be said, he does some foolish things as well. Here we go. Instead of putting the ball dead at the end, he played an overhead kick which resulted in Derry getting their final three. Now, this is the ball, I presume, that was played over the head and I suppose it was a battle between Tom O'Sullivan trying to get it and he didn't get it and the goal he got and the ball came on the field and laid on to that field. Um, a foolish thing to do late on? Or is it? Or we've all been there. I mean, we, you, you, you get carried away. I mean, I, I think that look. This is nitpicking. If, if it came off, yeah. so like <laughs> if it came off, yeah. If it came off, look, the, the the great players do things, and you know they see, yes. they have the vision to see things two or three steps ahead. Clifford is one of those that didn't work, but you know people would say a one man doesn't win all that, and have to go with Dini while ago. If we if David Clifford gets injured, we're in big trouble. He's he's he's. Uh, He's, he's going to be the greatest footballer we've ever seen. He's absolutely outstanding. He's, he's doing it when we're under pressure. It's a very easy to do it when you're five points up, but he's pulling us out of a hole. He had a vision yesterday. He had a momentum. He single-handedly kept Kerry in that game when, when some of our better players or our, 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 our marquee players around him were not performing. David Clifford did. And, you know, Gavin White did as well, but, but like, David Clifford was outstanding. And, you know, the more you get, the, the likelihood is you're going to make a mistake or two. He doesn't make too many. Mm -hmm. and he'd be the reason why nobody get an all Ireland ticket, I imagine, <laughs> because the whole country <laughs> will be holding onto their two tickets every club. <laughs> we'll take a quick break. <laughs> there you go, we'll be back to Pat for the 10 to 7 race in Clarny in a couple of minutes, there's no problem there. Uh, Donald, a couple more comments. Derry, uh, until the tank was empty, proved or proved the cracks exposed by Mayo are still paper covered. Still paper covered, yes. Uh, the words might be around the place, but. The point being made here is we're still a bit, you know, there's a bit of a doubt still there, Liam, isn't there? There is, I suppose, yeah. And I thought yesterday, Derry probably put a template out of how to be Kerry. Did, did Derry ask so many questions yesterday that Dublin would be sitting down now saying, you know, there's a couple of cracks here and there's a, this position isn't as good as we thought it was and, 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 and the whole lot? Yeah, but you'd be hoping, like, with, when Kerry gets an all on the final, that players will step up. Yeah, yesterday we probably had three or four players who were probably a, a nine out of ten. Everybody else was well, well round. It's not a five or a four. 
So coming to Nolan and find we'll be hoping like the, the likes of Paddy Clifford and all these guys will will, will step up and really put their uh, you know put their head above the pulpit. But yeah, I suppose like it's going to be um, it's going to be an interesting <laughs> enough fun to that, like, when things come in like that. I know absolutely. There's so many comments coming in. Uh, Jimmy from Arfurt pulls me up over the coals. You're dead right, Jimmy. It's not South Kerry or North Kerry. It's totally irrelevant. Jack O'Connor is Kerry. Fair play to Jimmy. Uh, from Aaron Ferguson, you of course you're dead right on that one. Uh, now a couple about this the man the match. My God, I've, I've so many man the match comments coming in. Obviously from different parts of the world. I'm going to ask poor Dinny Long to put him in order for me because <laughs> he can go home to Cork and be safe enough. Uh, we have loads of people saying Gavin White was man the match yesterday. Totally overlooked and it was totally wrong. A couple of people have given Shane Ryan the nod. Yeah, should be man the match. David Clifford was the man the match. Uh, and who else we have another man the match award and Stephen O'Brien should be man the match as well regardless of 35 minutes or not yeah. uh, four fantastic performances by the four of them yeah uh, you know obviously all four played very well like, but when you're looking at the 75 76 minutes and the whole game the way it panned out you know Kelly came under fierce pressure mm -hmm. and when that pressure was at its greatest David Clifford was the man who was answering the questions mm -hmm. and like you know I'm not trying to take from Gavin White or oh, Young Ryan no, no, and, and, or anybody. And, 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 and that's but not the point. In the, no. in, yeah, in the overall, when you look at the game overall, mm -hmm. and you look and see the parts mm -hmm. of the game and the way the game went, like it had highs and lows, and mm -hmm. Kelly were down and Kelly were up. It was everywhere. But when the need was greatest, mm -hmm. David Clifford answered the call. And I suppose a couple of years ago when he was captain at 20 or 21 or whatever it is, people were saying, you know, it was very young to be putting that pressure on him. He's now 23 or 24, mm -hmm. but pressure means z practically zero to that man. I don't know him at all, but this guy just, when is that the greatest demand is required, he seems to be able to produce the goals. That's, you know, for me, he deserved man of the match. He was the man of the match. Mm -hmm. And it's unlucky in Gavin White mm -hmm. and Shane Ryan and Stephen O'Brien made a huge contribution. No one denying that, but over the 76 minutes, he was the best player in the field. Yeah, absolutely, as, as he is most days. Uh, and just to tie off that section, uh, a comment in from uh, uh, Lister and Clarny. Paulie Clifford was very quiet yesterday, so it means that he will be man the match in the All Ireland final. Uh, so a bit of positivity there as well. Um, a Derry Texter uh, as well. Uh, Dole, uh, what a great battle yesterday. I think we can count ourselves unlucky, uh, but there is no doubt that the team that wanted it more in the final minutes won. Uh, but please, can we please, please, please stop this narrative that Derry are only a defensive team. They showed yesterday they can play football as great as the rest of them. Uh, best to look to carry in the final. A lot of truth in that comment, I suppose, Liam, to be fair. I mean, we look at the prism and we look at the Ulster teams coming out and we kind of have a defined idea that there's only one game to the plan. Of course, when we're watching them through the league and all that kind of stuff as well, and it, it tends to be very defensive in the league. Um, is it surprising that... Monaghan came out and played football, done very well. Derry have it in them. Tyrone probably not there at the moment, so probably going backwards maybe a small bit. Um, but more and more teams, if they embrace the style yeah. of football, they might even go further on. Well, Donald, I think the, the penny is finally dropping. That you need to have, you need to play football to win all Ireland. You know, Kerry in Dublin and the Galways have shown that down through the years, <coughs> and I think you know, like Denise said earlier, you probably would like like Tyrone. I, win one or two but if you want to be consistently up there with you would need and the way the game has gone now it's it's a mixture of a defensive forum with an attacking forum and I think you were on about Arma where they go like Arma has some fantastic footballers mm -hmm. now we're saying it here why why they can't go out and play football why are they all so defensive and I think Derry proved that yesterday Monaghan proved it as well you know so there is footballers like the, in every county but if you go into a defensive system, you know it's like us down here in Kerry. We've seen it for years. <coughs> we're we're kind of we're allergic to you know paying fifteen men behind the ball because at t at ten years of age, it's not it's, it's not in our DNA. You know, so we're trying to change it, and we're lucky because we have we have natural footballers. And I think at the end of the day, that's what's got us over the line yesterday was the natural football ability of able to kick a score, you know, to make the right decision. Derry yesterday, a couple of wrong decisions towards the end of the match, you know that. They had us on the ropes, but they just couldn't finish us off. But I think, look, from a team that were in Division Four only a few years ago, mm -hmm. and all Ireland semi-final, they are, they are, they are improving. And getting back to our listener, there's plenty of footballers in the north. We'd like to see them come out and and play play football like they did every every time they play like they did yesterday. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as I come to that, I was talking to Derry Fenn yesterday, uh, John, and he was saying that by the time they come out of Ulster, they beat themselves, you know, yeah. where they see Kerry come out and Dublin come out, much easier, much easier pace, and they will not, and they're able to kind of play. But every game in Ulster is fought like a, a, a dogfight with the words that he used. Is there a certain amount of truth to that? There is, there is definitely. Ulster is a minefield, you know, and they're back to back Ulster t- uh, champions. Real battle with uh, Alma in the final, uh, you know, so. Um, but look, there is, they have football, and I think they showed yesterday they can mix the defensive game with, with 15 men behind the ball, and very similar to Dublin when they were going well, is that they have the pace to attack. And talking about the man of the match, look, Gareth McKendis and Brendan Rogers, they were mm-hmm. simply outstanding as well yesterday. Derry uh, won yesterday. Derry won, yeah. Then. Shane McGuigan in the first half, but in the second half, Jason came to terms with him. But another you know, thing is that their wing back, Paddy McGrogan, went off injured after kicking the pint. It was a big loss to them. Mm-hmm. He was playing well. That half back came on top of that stage. Like Padre Cassidy certainly wasn't going to feature in the first four no. five subs, and all of a sudden he, yeah. he was on the field seven minutes in. in. And, and I suppose about the ref, he arrested yesterday and he let the play flow. It would remind you of a hurling game, we're just saying half here. Hard hits, we gave them and we took them. But I thought he'd added to the atmosphere and the stand. You know, the Shane Ryan, one David Clifford, there was a few more. Brendan Rogers had a tough tackle at another stage. All within the rules, in fairness. But I think he let it flow, McQuillan. And I think it added to it. Football is a man's game, obviously within the rules, but you know, it can be very stop start if you really apply the rules. But I think he let it flow yesterday and it added it. Yeah, I can tell you there from SD, well done to Kerry, uh, well done, of course, to Jason Foley, our star, and David Clifford is outstanding as he broke uh, on the full back line with nine points. Yeah, absolutely fantastic, and thanks for tuning in there, Ivan. Um, quick question on that, uh, Dini, we're down to 96 seconds for the next race. Um, the hit that David Clifford put in, the fair shoulder, which was deemed a yellow card in the end, all the angle showed to, to, to the shoulder yeah, and the whole yeah. lot. How uh, was your read on it, basically? <laughs> I suppose. Yeah, I suppose first view, it, it looked as if it, it, he, he made contact w- with the chest. Mm-hmm. But I, I think w- once he's shown back, and you'll see it a couple of times, you know, the, the, obviously there was no intention in it. But I, I thought that it was a bit harsh to give me a yellow card. But yeah. again, you know, the referee has only one look at it. Do, does that call in to going down the rugby the rugby style of it, looking up at the monitor and yep. taking 15 <laughs> seconds and saying, I'm going to have a look at this, lads? For uh, the big calls, you have to do yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Big games, big calls. Yeah, I think yeah. Dory, you're, you're dead on it. Yeah. You, know, mm-hmm. you, you know, people are saying to stop the game. It won't stop the game. And it's fair to the teams and it's, it's fair to the referee. And I think it would be a great move forward by the GA to say, hold on, let's have a look at it. No. You have a look at it and then you decide, but it's very difficult for a referee to make that decision when he has one look at it. So mm-hmm. you can blame the referee uh, for something that the crowd are being for something saying put him off or whatever. That you know, have one look at the monitor and it will help everybody. Yeah, fair play. Uh, it's, a, it's part of the debate we'll have, uh, but we'll head straight across to Clarendon for the next race. There you go, the races in Clarendon are absolutely flying tonight, fair play to them. Uh, and we'll be back to Pat Griffin for uh, a show betting just after seven there before we head to the next race as well. And we get the full uh, SP on that as well. Just going back to that point, of course, uh, looking at games, we're, we're probably three or four minutes into seven o'clock now. Um, Liam, Sean Horshan, as we were discussing off, off air, I mean, he took a cheeky glance up at, uh, at the <laughs> monitor yeah. at one stage and obviously ahead of before the GFL decided to turn it off because it turned off everything controversial. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Might you, yeah. you see it once it's over, like yeah. anything at all is controversial. Uh, and that was the 45 um, where McCaffrey went up and yeah. he knew it wasn't the 45, he kind of played the riff and he said, oh, it's a 45. And the umpire bought it and it was a 45. And, I don't think it was at a crucial time in the game. I think Monaghan were kind of a, a small bit spin. But even so, he took one glance up, took a smile. The crowd nearly told him what it was, and he awarded the right yeah, decision. Yeah. Sure, surely, I mean, in the biggest games where fellas are, are training the hardest and managers and Jack Connor can't get a message on, on the field of play, something like this it would, would have sorted out the David Clifford issue. But would we have a situation then that everything needs to be second-guessed? No, that, that comes down to the referee then. The big calls need to be decided, i.e., i.e. red cards, mm-hmm. penalty decisions, you know, bad tackles, whether it's a, 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 even a yellow yellow card. Like, we could have been here tonight and McQuillan could have gave David, David Clifford a red card. You know, we'd be, there'd be uproar about it. Mm-hmm. But you have to get the right decisions right. I think if we go back to, was it 2011, was it Declan O'Sullivan? Mm-hmm. That one. That was a call that cost us, it cost us the All-Ireland. Yeah. You know, that, if, if the team all was there, that was obviously a, a, a bad tackle. 
No, but um, yeah, I'm look and I'm saying it for years because I was I was a woman crow park as an umpire myself. The equipment is there, you know, everything is there in front of you. Why don't they use it? And they seem to be going back to the the old ways again, you know. Point the finger at one man. Football's gone so hard now to ref at that level. You've you've teams that are training for twelve months constant. It's it's a million euro business now. Teams are it's a lot of money. You <laughs> we know at the end of the year how much it's going to cost for to carry to train at the, our senior team. You know, so you don't want to be thrown out of an, you don't want to be thrown out of an, or lose an All Ireland final because of a bad decision from from a referee who didn't see it at the time. Yeah, the game is moving so fast now, John. Anyway, I mean, in, in fairness to McQuillan yesterday, I mean. God Almighty, you, you go into the middle field, you do your best, there's 43,000 people shouting at you one way or the other way, or they're all shouting at you the wrong way. Um, and the game is so hard and it moves fairly quickly. Uh, yes, there's a couple of decisions up that people will say, he got this wrong, he got that wrong. Uh, but by and large, I mean, is it time for a second referee or a second person inside in that field to play? I, yeah, I think it should be looked at, a second referee, half each. I go three referees. And, and <laughs> they're there on the yeah. sideline already. Yeah. Yeah. All, well, all yeah. they will bring him in. But they're not into. But sure, but they won't put their hand up to make a decision. And you know, I suppose once you're well, inside, once you're inside, if you look at the Aussie, the Australian rules, they have the referee. Basketball, the smallest court mm-hmm. that you can have, and we have three referees. Yeah, yeah. 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 one three for three for the league and stuff like that. Right, yeah. well, so if you bring it back to a job situation, working for a company, they're all the time looking to improve, bring in new ideas and new yeah. initiatives to improve to get a better output. The GA should look at this. The, 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 I think the the quarterfinals in Pro Park. You have the technology, one look at the monitor, job done. If a fella is sent off incorrectly, whether it be black or a red, it could cost you the match. Yeah. And it's only 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. Has to be brought in. It won't even be as long as 30 That's seconds, right? exactly. I suppose. Um, the ladies, of course, fantastic win. Congratulations to the moment. We'll, we'll, we'll talk a bit about maybe after 7 o'clock. The, 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 the clock from the ladies, is that something that the GA should certainly embrace? No, it's so simple. It's, it's, not <laughs> it's not so f- not funny anymore. Yeah. If they have it for the ladies, it's a fantastic idea. Like the one thing I'd say is that you go to a match, you had forty six or seven thousand people in Crow Park yesterday for the Gallagher. You probably had twenty five of them thought they were referees. So they'll call all the decisions and they're telling people around them understand. When it comes to four minutes of extra time, have the clock. It's so simple to do it and there's no there's no problem. The hooter goes, matches over. over. Yeah, absolutely. Um, no, a couple more comments, of course, coming in, get them in there. It's 0667123606 items on, on the phone tonight, and uh, 083 300 3300. Uh, and we'll take that conversation up, of course, uh, after seven o'clock as well. Uh, a lot of love out there still for Gavin White. He must have his own personal fan club. Three more comments in there for Gavin to be a man of the match. Um, and of course, David Clifford was. We'll take a break. Uh, lads, very lucky to escape for Kerry. Uh, if Derry got their two or three points midway through the second half, they would have been out of sight uh, of the kingdom and left with no hope. Kerry didn't win. Uh, Derry's drop in accuracy left the kingdom off the hook, and that's Cullum in Kildare, or Cullum in Kildare, even in Clorgan, even I'd say. Um, Derry were outstanding, Liam, in the first half. I- everything seemed to go over the bar. The second half, they didn't. Is that a, a more difficult goal to score in? Yeah, Kerry struggled as well in the first half down there. There's always a kind of a swirling breeze down around the hill, and they're done. Yeah, you know, they, and it was it was there, and we struggled ourselves at times, but um, yeah, the, the hill sixteen always seems to be a harder goal to score in. Mm-hmm. Well done to the players and the management on a great win yesterday. It's fantastic to be back in another All Ireland final. Hopefully, the Kerry supporters will be heard loud and clear in Crow Park, Katrina from Tralee. Uh, John, I suppose a lot being made of the fact that 43,000, the place was half empty in tradition, they opened it at all. Uh, it's still an incredible amount of people to get into their car and drive. They like get dairy like Kerry, I mean, it's three or four hours of a journey. Uh, it's not a, 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 a cheap day out anymore. Tickets. Uh, food, diesel, accommodation for people that decide to stay overnight, four o'clock on a Sunday evening. Uh, it's a big number to get there, or obviously, I suppose, there's going to be a bandwagon of people over the All Ireland. Yeah, it's a, it's a big number in the circumstances, though, and I think, you know, and you know, it, on the other hand, of it, it's disappointing because uh, Crop Park was saying there'd be 55,000 sold. But, like, it's you look at the bigger picture, the, the, the system we've in place now. With the, with the, the, the group stages as well as the provincial championships, National League, quite a number of games, big expense, a lot of families, saw them yesterday going, you know, going in and coming out of Crop Park, three and four kids, uh, parents with them or whatever, like that's five or six people, tickets, it's food, it's petrol, you know, can you keep going and people maybe waited for the final, but those were there yesterday, 
were witness one of the best games of football that we've seen in a long time. Mm -hmm. It was well worth the admission. And three twenty for a small bag of sweets. <laughs> it was <laughs> <Pat> done. <laughs> so, <laughs> you wouldn't want to have a whole lot of small children. <laughs> uh, it's cheaper giving potatoes and sweets these days. Uh, why do we concede the opposition kickouts and why don't we push up? Uh, Dini, this is the, the new brand of football. Uh, we conceded a lot of the kickouts in the first half, didn't we? Yeah, well, you know, like we said there earlier on, that uh, Kerry, obviously, we're all their, their management structures and all the people that they have in the back room and all that they would have been looking at Derry and saying this is the way this is the way we play and but I was amazed that Kerry are not alone Kerry but teams don't move up on the kick out because the big problem in the modern game that if you give the opposition will say an easy kick out they're all good on the ball they'll work it down the field and now with the extra man the goalie coming out he's causing you a major problem and as we saw just go back to the Kerry game when Kerry decided that they would press up on, on Derry's kick out, that you know, Kerry had great success with it. I was surprised that Kerry let it go so long that they didn't press up on the kick out. And I think the team, the two teams, Griffin the Allah and Dublin and Kerry, whoever will be brave enough to press on the kick out will probably win the match. So I think that's where the game could be won and lost. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, the, the Kerry teams have been winning all in for a long time. Uh, John, uh, who calls himself a noctuarian from Kilcommon, uh, all eight decades of him there. Uh, Kerry teams in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, and 50s were noted for winning with late scores in the last five to ten minutes. So it's a great tribute to the present team to have the fitness and confidence to do what they did yesterday. Um, much was talked about the, the, the hurling games, uh, John Kennedy, over the last number of weeks. That there only needed to be one in the last couple of minutes. They can all score 20 points each or a couple of goals each all the way along. Between. But to the last four or five minutes, they're the big moments. Football's getting that way now as well. And, and I, I presume, not knowing ahead of time, Kerry and Dublin, that game will be in the balance all the way to the end. Yeah, I'd imagine it'll go back to the, go to the last eight or ten minutes again, like yesterday. But the, there's huge credit due to both the teams that played yesterday and indeed Saturday evening. The level of fitness now that they have, you know, the intensity, the hits, the, the, the going forward, the coming back, uh, the work rate, and to be able to do that for nearly 80 minutes to the huge tribute. And Kerry had the edge, in fairness, they had the edge on the fitness, I think, because Derry did definitely drop the intensity and, and we, we, we took advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Hi lads, our sideline were in sixes and sevens around the hour mark yesterday uh, with a bit of head scratching going on. I'd say uh, our captain led the way uh, on the home straight. He led from the front organising and driving his fellow players around him. Uh, and by the way, uh, if in capital letters uh, is uh, a big little word, let's forget about last year and if the dubs had Cluxton uh, and so we have Sam, uh, the mad carry man. There you go. No ifs and no buts no uh, and, and this, yeah. We, we won it, Cluxton wasn't there, <laughs> that's it, uh, and, and there's no doubt, and that's the man carry man, thanks very much. Uh, and the last one for a while, uh, lads, David was excellent, uh, followed closely by Graham O'Sullivan, uh, thought Rogers was the best, best player on the pitch, uh, and McCluskey was excellent as well. And the other comments, uh, 066 of course, Liam, that sets up the all Ireland final. Um, Dublin, kind of surprising they're there, or is it not surprising at all? Not surprising. No, not one bit surprising. I think we've we've said it here, and I think we've said it at the start of the year that where we'll beat Dublin and win Dal Island, yeah. you know. And I think it's it's coming that way because look, for me they have a massive advantage. They're playing at home. There is a sting left in these in a lot in of a these. Neutral venue. Uh, well, if I, if I want to call it a neutral <laughs> venue, <laughs> but um, yeah, look, and I suppose there's there's a we were talking to a couple of stewards above um, in the in the press box to after the Tyrone game. They were saying like there's there's a big push on above with Dublin because they want to get the ninth all Ireland medal for for the, for the boys. Mm -hmm. They want to make history. It, and it, it, It's funny that you mentioned that now, of course, I was watching Jay go and of course the whole Kerry and I was going to shoot me because I actually watched it, but uh, Mark O'Shea and uh, I can't think it was Petty Andrews yeah. uh, were doing the commentary and they were left inside before the, the last game because I was over in Spain and we were watching it at the Tyrone game and they went in and walked around the dressing rooms beforehand and the whole lot and they were kind of explaining the experience and you know, for the listeners and yeah. the whole lot. Hey Andrew said, this was our dressing room. This is where we set up. This is where we stayed. Mark O'Shea says, we were here all the time. When Jim Gavin was there, 
even though there's two dressing rooms or four dressing rooms, whatever it is, this was the one Dublin picked out. Surely in the modern game there should be a toss of a coin for who gets the, even the decision, like who picks the dressing room in all Ireland final day. You imagine that would be the only fairness, you know. Um, but I suppose. Does it add to the narrative that Dublin play at home and you know yeah. it, it, it's our it's our picture? It's, it, it, but it is even the um, the the crowd that they'll win. They'll probably have they will get more tickets than what we will get more than likely. And it's just the roar that they have. I think we all remember uh, McManaman's goal. Like sh- the ground yeah. shook that day. Mm-hmm. No, so yeah. you can imagine they carry players out in the field. Like it, it would have drained them. That kind of a roar. Yeah. It also helps helps against the referee as well. No, because a referee is human after uh, human after all. And if you if you make one decision next to you, have fifty thousand people roaring at you. The next decision might be a bit easier. You know, and the team like that. So there's a lot of small things favoring the favoring the Dublin. And I think that's why they have a big advantage playing at home. Mm-hmm. But I think we have the legs this year. No, we have the experience as well. Um, I agree with Dini. We need to push up in their kick out. We can't give Cluxton uh, and a Monaghan. Monaghan proved it the weekend. They pushed up in Cluxton. They caused them a lot of trouble. Did they push up? Did, did, did Monaghan decide we just go man and man? I I mean that that to me was the, the most kind of old fashioned game in the sense that everybody just picked the man and off they went. But then when the goalkeepers push up, yeah. Cluck, Cluxton isn't like the rest of the modern goalkeepers. No. He doesn't come 40 yards out. No. He doesn't stand in the corner to block a thing. Maybe it's his legs, maybe it's his age. Uh, and the other thing that I noticed about Cluxton did he, watching the, the, the dublin Monaghan game, when he does get the ball and he comes out 20 yards or 25 yards, there's no big kick 40 yards no. down the field. He wants to pass. He it's wants to a find hand, the man. It's a, it's a hand yeah. pass. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. So is there a weakness there, Denny? It possibly is. It possibly is. But again, I suppose that's part of making sure they retain possession more than you know he's he plays outfield for his club I believe mm-hmm. so obviously he's a good, if you're a good kicker off the ground obviously he's a good kicker off his hands and you know he has vast vast experience I have noticed that, that it is a, a fisted pass when he comes out so obviously that's part of his plan and it's a part of his plan with the fellas outside him that somebody is on their way back to take that hand pass so again hard enough to counteract that but I think if you're brave enough to push up on either Shane Ryan or Stephen Cluxton, he will have a big bearing in the game. That's my opinion. And they're, yeah. un- they're unbeaten in the last 11 all Ireland finals and they're playing them all in Dublin. Yeah. Is that a home venue? <laughs> but Dublin are on a mission, Donald, I think. They, are, yeah. they looked, what do we need to do to win in all Ireland? They brought back Cluxton, Paul Mannion, Jack McCaffrey and another vital part of the, of the jigsaw is Pat Gilroy. Mm-hmm. He's the back. water boy. Yeah, he's back now. Huge experience, and he is back. And they're trying everything at this. Everything at it. Yeah. When did you think? When did you see Dublin dropping Kieran Kilkenny before? No, they've made huge calls. They're in all Ireland final. I, I think they're going to be different Dublin. Jesus, I'm waiting to you you have the whole nation to press <laughs> before we ever get going about the all Ireland final. Uh, very disappointed with Jack O'Connor's strategy of sitting back and inviting Derry on. Not good enough. Derry imposed their game on us. Uh, it nearly cost us the game, but for Stephen O'Brien uh, and of course David Clifford, we would be licking our wounds today. Uh, another caller says, uh, I don't know if it's been mentioned, lads, but Kerry kept uh, Derry to only four points in the second half. That was very good going uh, to this Derry team. That's Johnny and Ard Fert. Yeah, very good point, actually. Um, and hi, Donald. Great game of football yesterday between Kerry and Derry. Uh, Kerry experience won it in the end uh, when last time lost Dublin lost the All Ireland final. Uh, what was the score and who scored the goal? Oh dear God! When last time Dublin lost to the Ireland final? The last time, last time they lost to Kerry was eighty five. Eighty five. Timmy Dow got the goal. Fair play, sir. John Mitchell. Uh, yeah, great pass from Joe Lynch. Lynch. Yeah. Were you there, John Kennedy? Do you want to? Do you actually got the last point? Did you? Yeah. The game was over. The game was over. Yeah. <laughs> was, it the <laughs> was it the winning point? It was the winning <laughs> point. The ball was critical, and that was that was a very good Dublin team as well. What dressing room were you in? <laughs> they so were sure. the old dressing rooms that time. <laughs> underneath the hall, underneath the hall. Didn't they? Seventy three. What were the dressing rooms in Crow Park like? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You remember we, them at all? No, no. We were inside somewhere. Yeah, we were. We were glad to be there. We got the right results, and you know. You don't care about the dressing room, just what you do when you get out yeah. is crucial. I don't know about Dublin being there for all the other, but if we have a bad team, 
John Kennedy, those days, of course, when you won the All Ireland, the whole of Kerry went into the dressing room. Were, were they coming to an end? Because if you look at the golden years, I mean, Mick O'Dwyer was invited everybody into the dressing room. Everyone was inside celebrating with the players. That 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 doesn't happen, obviously. No, no it doesn't happen. <laughs> no, it doesn't happen. <laughs> but what was it like? I sure, it was it was mayhem, really, <laughs> Donald. In fairness, you know, on the field, number one. But like, it was a it was a great occasion for club fellas and friends to meet you on the pitch. There was something special about it, do you know? And and then like obviously the more the more intimate uh, family members would go into the dressing room or venture to go in. But I think the pitch was, was, was a big one. You know, you would be inside and you'd see the club lads and it was emotional for that few minutes afterwards and, and it was very important. But look, things have evolved and it's not happening anymore in Cork Park. It happens around the country in provincial venues and I think it's 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 great to see it. Yeah, I, I think they're uh, agreeing with John that you know, I suppose we're going back to the old days again there, but I suppose, you know, the, the big thing really was when the people came in when the match was over. I think it was unique to the GA and, you know, I can't remember much about the dressing room, but I certainly can remember quite a lot about the pitch. There was people everywhere there. I suppose it was like it was the finish of a job really when when the people came in and there was so much excitement, you know, then that it was real and it was over. So from my personal point of view, I thought that was the best part of the day. And uh, I think it was a great tradition, but obviously from security and all that nowadays and health and safety and everything, it's only right that that's gone away because, you know, if you had somebody get hurt, small children and particularly, it, it would be a sad day for some family. And we, you wouldn't want that. Mm -hmm. Did either of two of you ever get an old scalp or a belt or a <laughs> hello with, 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 with 30,000 people? <laughs> I suppose the nearest we came to it was one day up in Cork, you know, was it the drawn match of the replay, the, all the crowd were inside the side and they were everywhere and I think the Kerry crowd were a bit more angry <laughs> than the Cork crowd. And I it think was 76, was it? Uh, <laughs> I think so, yeah. yeah. I think that day was, I wouldn't say it was dangerous, but it was, it was a bit of mighty because... Was that the day Kerry got the goal they didn't cross the line at all? I think the, I don't know if that man is dead now or not, but he had uh, a lot of money in that match. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. <laughs> and that's the gospel church. <laughs> <laughs> <aren't it> <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, listen, guys, thanks very much for this evening. Uh, as I said, we we, we we had plenty on with we, races and the, and the whole lot. Uh, we'll be joined later on, of course, by the Kerry Masters, and we'll be making a quick phone call to Glenn Fles. Um Quickly, uh, of course, uh, we have two minutes before we head across to the races. Um, the scramble for tickets, Liam. Been two weeks. It's already <laughs> started, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, the phones are hopping and the, the, people, uh, the I mean, messages are flying. Got four, I got four messages on the way down yesterday evening from three people who I know never go to a football match <laughs> looking for tickets. <laughs> and one poor fellow who deservedly will need a ticket but possibly won't get one. Yeah. Uh, it's an awful kind of... It, it's, it's madness, really, it's madness, for, yeah. for the next two weeks. Yeah, for yeah. the next week and a half it'll it be. Is, yeah. But I suppose it adds to the whole the whole occasion and stuff like that. But, yeah, it's, it's going to be a mad week and a half now, all right? But yeah. you know, invariably, you have to say, the Kerry County Board and Peter Twist... They do look after it. They yeah. do look after it. Look, the, the, the genuine supporters do get them. And, you know, with scheme tickets and everything now, rarely you get a, a guy that goes to games or a woman that goes to games that are without a ticket. Uh, but it's, it's the uncertainty, though. Yeah. It can be up to the Saturday night and that's... And probably without the minor match now will help as yeah. well, which is a pity because I do think the minor match is a massive yeah. loss to turn all on a final day. You, know, yeah. so. you wouldn't be saying that if they were taking 6,000 tickets. Six, maybe 10,000 <laughs> tickets <Yeah. laughs> yeah. away from it. Yeah. Um, Dini, uh, the, the, the whole thing about tickets, and we've, we've, we've one minute. Um, obviously, everybody can get a ticket, that's just mm. the way it goes. Uh, and there will be kind of a, a narrative out there that something will be at the match that has never been at the match before. Uh, there's no other way around it, is there? I mean, well, I, funnily enough, Don, I, that you asked the question, I think that the two teams in two weeks' time, I think they should get the bulk of the tickets. I don't see any reason why Cork or Galway or, or Tyrone or Roscommon or May or even, you know, I suppose there are certain people that run the county board and things like that that should get a ticket. But I think the bulk of the tickets, if Kerry got 20, 25,000 tickets, they'd have plenty of tickets. And if Dublin got 25 or 30,000, you still have 20,000 tickets to go around. So I think the big problem is that the, the two counties participating in the finals should get the bulk of the tickets. That's what I think. 
rather than having them all raffled off and sent down to their cousins and their aunts <laughs> and their uncles and, and, and the whole lot. They, they, well, of course, all the things will end up to a good home anyway, and hopefully you, you'll get a ticket. And if you can't, sure, you can listen here on Radio Kerry, Tim and Ambrose. Sure, they, they, they got two tickets. Maybe they get a couple more tickets than two, I'd imagine, as well. Uh, we'll take a quick break. <laughs> 